Today I'm going to talk about how to use the request library in Python. So the request library is for sending HTTP requests, so get requests, post requests, from inside of your Python application. So to demonstrate it, I'm going to be using the API I created a few videos ago in Flask. So let me start the server for that. Okay, and then I want to start Python here. So I'm only going to be using the command line in this video or the REPL in Python um, because it's a pretty simple example that I want to show you. But in a future video, I'll do something more complicated with HTTP requests. So the first thing you need to do is import the request library, import request and there it is imported and one thing you want to make sure before you get started is make sure you have the latest version of requests because I'm going to be using some JSON functionality that doesn't exist in some stock installations so make sure you have the the latest version of it so after I import a request the API is very very easy to use and understand so I'm gonna assign response to be requests.get and this takes in a parameter, the URL. So the URL of the server is here. I'm just gonna copy that here. And it's going to be on the index. So looking at the code, if I do a request on the index, a get request, I should get this JSON object saying it works. So let's see that in action. And I forgot to put requests at the end, not just, it's plural. All right, so I ran it. I get a 200 status code, meaning it completed successfully. So let's take a look at the response. Response.json will give me the JSON object that came along with the response. So I get message, it works in Unicode. That's why there's you there. So let me try a different one. Response equals requests. I get and now I want to do a get request on the lang endpoint so another 200 response so on lang it should return a JSON object with all the languages in it so JavaScript Python Ruby let's see that in action so response.json and here we have this JSON object, which is now a Python object. So a dictionary of a list, which then has dictionaries inside of it. So we can assign this to, say, a variable response.json. And we can look inside this objects, which is just a dictionary with the list inside, which then has dictionaries in it. So languages, and now I have the list. If I add an index there to get something out of the list, let's say zero, I have JavaScript. And finally, if I put the name key, I get JavaScript back as the value. So that's pretty easy to understand. How about I try a post request? So I'm going to do a post request on the same endpoint and I'm going to supply a JSON object with the name of a new language. So response equals request dot post same URL except this time I need to supply some data along with the request. So posts can take an argument JSON and JSON is going to equal just a dictionary with a name value pair of the language I want to add. And this will get converted from a Python dictionary to a JSON object in the request. So I'm going to add C sharp and I'm going to post it on this URL. 
So I just did it. I got a 200 response. Uh, let's just take a look at the response object. 200, so they match, of course. Then if I look at the JSON inside, I should see an updated languages list with the new language I added. It gets appended. So now I have JavaScript, Python, Ruby, and C Sharp. So it's very simple to use. The API is very straightforward. You shouldn't ever be confused when you're using this library. So if you want to check out other other parts of the API, just go to Google and search for Python requests, and it should be the first thing that pops up. And I'll make a video later on using this in a more realistic example instead of calling localhost, I'll call out to a real server. So thanks for watching.